Hey guys, and welcome back to Sports Design School, where we teach you everything you need to know to create high quality sports designs in Adobe Photoshop. Now, I've gotta be honest, I've been promising this video for a long time now, and we're finally getting around to it. Today, we're gonna to be showing you three different ways to cut out players in Adobe Photoshop. And it's gonna be an awesome tutorial for someone that's just getting started in Photoshop or even someone that's been using it for a long time but just wants to know the different ways to cut out players. So let's get started. And before we dive into this video, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. We actually have lots of awesome videos on the way that we're recording here in the next few days. And part of those videos include free PSDs that we give away, completely free, no questions asked, just download them immediately after the video. The thing is, those download links are only active for seven days. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of those free PSD downloads. Also, please give us a like on this video. It seriously helps so much getting this video in front of more people and we really appreciate it. So what I've done is I've just created this Photoshop document and I've just duplicated it three times. It's the exact same thing. And I'm gonna show you three different methods of cutting out a player in Adobe Photoshop. So let's get started with probably the most trivial of all of the methods, the one that takes the longest, but it's the one that you use for professional looking results, and that's the pen tool. You might have heard of it before, and if not, don't worry about it, we're gonna cover it in this video. So I'm just gonna tap P on my keyboard to open up the pen tool, and I'm gonna zoom in so I can get a better look at this cutout. And I'm just gonna start in the bottom left-hand corner of our image. Bring up P again. And I'm just going to start by clicking and then I'm going to click another point. That was easy enough. And now I'm going to go and click on this point right here and click again. And that's all you really have to do with the pen tool with some exceptions. And that's when you get to the curved parts of your image. So see right here on his glove, we're going to want to curve this line a little bit. So I'm just going to click and then drag to match the outline of my shape. And that looks pretty good. Now I could just go and click right here and drag again and keep on doing that over and over and over again. But you'll notice there's a problem if we keep on clicking. So let's say I wanna click here. You'll notice that it automatically starts to form a line for me, even though I want to go kind of around here instead of through here. And that's just because it's naturally just creating a curve in your line. So to avoid that, we're just going to hit Alt on this point. And that clears any potential lines it would automatically create for us. It allows us just to click wherever we want to. So I'm just going to click like this. And again, press Alt to adjust my curve to how I want it. And I'm just gonna go through and click. And again, the nice thing about this is if you ever mess up and there's a point that you don't really like or it's not really fitting in, you can just hit Command Z to undo it. And it undoes that single point, which is super nice. And again, this is just a really precise way of going through cutouts. And I'm gonna jump forward in the video so you don't have to sit here and watch me cut out this entire player. So I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, as I zoom out, we've completely circled the entire outside area of our cutout. And so now I'm just gonna hit one of these three options in the top left corner of my screen when I have the pen tool open. So there's selection, 
mask and shape. By hitting selection, it just selects the area that I've traced around using the pen tool. If I hit mask, it'll create a mask using that shape, which we don't want to do that quite yet because we still have one more step before we get to that point. And then we can also hit shape if we want to, which just creates a shape that fills in the area that we have just selected with the pen tool. But for right now, I'm just going to hit selection. And I'm just going to hit OK. And you'll see the marching ants outline pops up on our outline. And I'm going to go over here and select this tool for now and select select and mask. And what this button allows us to do is it allows us to refine our edges that we just created. I also want to point out it's a pretty good way of getting crisp clean lines on your design. As you can see everything looks nice and sharp and smooth. There's no fuzzy lines. There's no blurring or any kind. And as you can see, everything looks good except for this area underneath his arms. We want to make sure we remove that as part of our cutout. To, that, to do that, we're just going to zoom in. And then we're going to hit this tool over here. It's just the brush tool. And all we're going to do is paint out all of the areas that we don't want to keep. So I'm going to choose the minus button and then I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and we're just going to paint out all along the area that we don't want to keep. Now you can do this as precise or as undetailed as you want to. I'm just kind of rushing through it for right now since this is just a video, but it's as simple as going through and brushing out all the areas that you want to remove. I'm then going to make my brush a little bit bigger and just remove some of the bigger parts a little bit easier. That's looking good. And then again, I can make my brush smaller to get into some of the more tight spaces. So I'm going to remove this and then I can dive in here to some of these tighter spots. Same with these wrinkles in his jersey, right there, and then this part on his glove as well. And again, if you want to spend a lot of time on this to make sure your design is crisp and clean, you're definitely able to do that. I'm just kind of rushing through for the purposes of this video. Now I'm not going to do this other part of his arm for now just because it's the exact same process but if you wanted to remove this space right here all you do is just tap B and then make sure you choose minus and then remove everything that you don't want. Now we have a couple of options over here and I'll just go over those just so you have an understanding of what they do. So smooth just kind of smooths the lines of your selection. Again our selection is already nice and smooth so we don't have to worry about that. We can hit feather which feathers our selection. I don't know how, really what you would need that for. Um, there are some things you can do with that to help kind of refine some of your selection edges but I'll go over that in a separate video. So for right now we're just going to hit OK. And again we have the marching ants outline back up on our screen with our underarm selected right here. Now there are a lot of different ways that I've seen people move past this point. It's very common for people to hit command J and jump to a new layer but I would not recommend that at all and I'll tell you why. If you hit command J and then you find out oh wait part of his number is missing or part of his arm is missing and you want to bring that back, there's no way to do that. You can't just paint over it. There's no way to replace it. It's called working destructively and we don't want to destruct our layers. We want to keep them editable at all times. So let's say if I go back and I need to fix part of his arm that I accidentally clipped out, I'm able to do that at any time versus when you get to the end of the design, everything is just done with. So I'm going to hit Command Z to go back. So with our marching ants outline up, 
we're just gonna hit this button right here. And that's just gonna create a mask using the shape that we just created. And you'll see that if we were to change our background, oh, if we were to change our background to a solid color, let's just say orange for right now, you'll notice our cutout is a true cutout. But the beauty of this is that let's say I want to bring part of the background back. I can just click on this mask right here and you'll notice how part of it is in black and part of it is in white. And you'll notice that the part that is in white is the part of our image that's showing. And the part that is in black is the part that's being hidden by our mask. So if I want to reveal parts of my image, I'm just gonna open up my brush tool by pressing B. I'm just gonna select my hard round brush for now and decrease the size. That's looking pretty good. And so I have my black color selected over here. So everywhere I paint in black will be removed from my image. Command Z to undo. Let's switch it to white. Everywhere that I paint in white will be revealed in that image. So what that allows us to do is that anytime we want to, we can add or remove parts of our image without regretting it later and not being able to go back and edit them. And that's the pen tool. It's a great way to get clean, professional lines. But the drawback is it does take some time. To give you a little bit of perspective, that whole cutout took about maybe four or five minutes for me to do, which if you're just kind of flying through a design, that might not be necessarily um, some time you want to put in to get that kind of result. And so we're going to move on to our second type of cutout, the second way to cut out designs. And it's one that's really common amongst people that are just starting in Adobe Photoshop that I see a lot. And it's the quick select tool. And so you've probably seen this and if not, don't worry, that's what this video is for. But essentially it's a brush that we can use to select our subject. And so to do this, we're just going to adjust the size like that. 67 for good luck. And I'm just going to paint around all the areas that I want to keep. And Photoshop does a pretty good job of figuring out where the boundaries of our image are. Just like that. And you can notice already this is so much quicker than what we just did. Just like that. Perfect. And here we are, we're back to our marching ants screen. Now again, that time it definitely wasn't perfect. Some of our lines are definitely going to be needing to refine, to be refined and to tweak some of our outline and things like that. So we're just gonna hit select and mask again. And see, so this is an area where a lot of people run into issues. So right now, part of our Titans logo is not showing up in our design. And if we were to work destructively, we would completely get rid of that and then we'd find that later we would have to find a way to add that back in and that's just a pain to deal with. Thankfully, we caught it early enough, but by using a mask like we showed just a few moments ago, you're able to avoid these issues. So I'm just gonna, again, type B on my keyboard and then increase the size of my mask and just paint over that area. And actually it looks like the outline did pretty good. This helmet is a little tricky up here. I'm gonna use this mask, this brush right here. It's a brush that looks like there's a fireball underneath called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. And what that does is it just goes over your image and tries to refine some of the edges to figure out what is the true edge to your image. Again, it's not perfect. And we'll have to go through with our brush tool and add back in this part of the helmet. But it's one way of doing that. And I'm just going to go just like that. And again, if I was doing this for an actual design, I would spend a lot more time on this. But since I'm just running through on a video, I'm going to skip through it. And again, it's the same process that we did last time with adding and removing this green area in the background. Um, 
So if we wanted to get rid of this area under his arms, we definitely could. I'm not going to go through that in this video because I've already shown you how. And so that looks okay. Not great. And you can see there are some areas where the cutout doesn't look perfect. And that's just how it is when you work with the quick select tool. And I find that when you work with the pen tool, it takes a lot of time up front. And if you use the quick select tool, it takes a lot of time during this stage where you have to refine the edges and figure out kind of what little lines in here you're missing on your original image. So again, not great, but we're just going to hit OK. And again, just hit add layer mask to be able to edit our design, our cutout, anytime we want to. Let's jump into our third tutorial. And this is the fastest way, and it's the way I find myself using a lot as like a base to start off any cutout. And I'll show you why. It's this tool called the Object Selection Tool. And if you don't have this tool in your Photoshop, don't worry about it. Just upload to or update to the latest version. It should be in there. And so the object selection tool uses artificial intelligence to isolate your subject from the background. And it doesn't work great all the time, but it usually does a good enough job and saves you enough time to justify going through and brushing out um, the mistakes in the select and mask process. So I'll show you how you can use it. There's two ways. You can either hit select subject up here and it'll just find the subject in your image and isolate it for you. Or you can just click and drag like this. And within that parameter, it'll find the subject. And you'll notice it did a really nice job of finding where our cutout was. I didn't do anything. I just clicked and dragged a rectangle over my player. And again, we're just going to hit select and mask. And it actually looks like this cutout was better than the one we used when we were using the other tool. And again, we just add back in all of the areas that we want. And that looks pretty good. Now, again, if I was spending a lot of time on this design, I would go through and refine some of these edges around here and things like that. For now, we're just going to hit OK. And just like that. And so there you go. We have three different techniques on how to achieve a cutout in Adobe Photoshop. And also advice on how to work non-destructively in Photoshop so we can come back and edit our cutouts anytime we want to. Make sure to leave a like on this video if you learned something new. I would really appreciate it. I really would love to be able to get these videos in front of more people on YouTube. Also, like this video. I just said that. Subscribe to this video and make sure you don't miss out on any of our free PSDs coming soon, our free tutorials coming soon. Guys, I promise it's going to be worth it and it's going to be awesome. Have a great one.